principles of influence and persuasion are the same principles, right? So whether you use a webinar, uh, a VSL, which is a virtual sales letter, or a written landing page copy, the principles are the same. I think that my message is very different from the one from Russell because I don't invite people to follow a particular script. I will give a framework, slightly different, but I think that some people, what they do, they try too much to be someone that they are not. Welcome back to the Better Rich Show. I'm with Simone Vicenzi today. And uh, what's really cool about this conversation is he goes into practical and tactical of exactly what you could do to grow more revenue in your business effective to today. Uh, I pull out of this guy some really simple strategies on how you could use signature presentations for your business, how you can um, create strategic partnerships for your business, how do you get on other people's uh, audiences and other people's platforms, how do you create your own platform. So really great stuff. Uh, Simone has 100 million uh, he understands that 100 million new businesses start every year, 90% of them fail within three years. So what his focus is, how to, is helping business owners create profitable businesses. And he's helped more than 500 people launch profitable businesses before he reached 30 years of age. Uh, he writes for, for Forbes magazine, Entrepreneur magazine. Uh, he's been on stages that include Les Brown and Tony Robbins. Uh, he is uh, based out of London right now, born in Italy. And he has a really cool accent, just like uh, previous episodes. I always like accents, but uh, we are um, we're going to dive deep into some practical tactical today with uh, Simone Vincenzi on the Better Than Rich Show. Get ready. We'll see you on the episode. Welcome to the Better Than Rich Show with your hosts, Andrew Biggs and Mike Abramowitz. The Better Than Rich Show helps ambitious leaders who are on a mission to leave the world better than they found it, change their perspective on what's important, increase their income and impact, and systemize their life and business. If you've ever struggled with finding your purpose, have felt disconnected or distracted, or found yourself going through the motions, this show will remind you that what you do matters and will re-inspire you to chase your highest dreams. It's time for you to become better than rich. Welcome back to the Better Than Rich Show. I'm your host today, Mike Abramowitz, and we are here with Simone Vincenzi. Yeah, that's my best uh, Italian. My my dad speaks fluent Italian, but it didn't rub off on me. Uh, how you doing today, brother? I'm doing great. Happy to be here and love to be introduced in this way. Let, <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Andiamo. Andiamo. Let's go. <laughs> Uh, so I know we were uh, just connecting before we clicked record and, um, I, I want to dive right in. I mean, we, we're obviously going to be able to go into a lot of different directions and listener, there's some tactical stuff that I'm going to draw out today. Um, but one of the things that you've done a, a, a fantastic job with is help businesses create and launch a product. And one of the strategies, I know you have many that we could unpack, but one of the strategies that you like you do is like a signature presentation or a webinar or, you know, help help draw in a crowd and then deliver a tremendous amount of value to that crowd. And then ideally, and after communicating that value to them, there's some sort of conversion on the back end. I think a lot of our listeners, regardless mm -hmm. of the space that they're in with their business, can leverage this strategy. I would love for you to just give give whatever goods you want to share. I'm sure there's a bunch behind a paywall, but you know whatever you want to share to kind of get the conversation started, reel the listener in, show them what you, what's up when it comes to signature presentations, and then we can kind of take some turns from there if, if you'd be down for that. Yeah. Um, to, to, to give a bit of a background on that uh, is something that I think that right now is one of the most important things that business owners and people can have. And the reason why, particularly in moments where uh, there are moments of uncertainty in the global economy, there are moments of uncertainty in people's lives, there are so many changes happening so fast, technology, politics, and so on, people take longer to make decisions. And people are more uh, discerning, people, they research more, and that's what makes a difference. While before it was easier to sell things, actually right now it's more difficult, there is more choice. And because people spend more time to get information and they need a stronger relationship before they buy something, that's why having a presentation is even more important now than ever. 
because uh, what the presentation does is basically solves all the questions that uh, your potential clients might have about you, about your offer, and about their, their ability to use them. So this is, we can start from these three, three parts because uh, the role of your presentation, or if you want that to be converting, whether it's a webinar or you can use it as an, as an in-person presentation, has three functionalities. One, to position you as the right person. Two, to make sure that people understand what you offer and your methodology. And number three is to make sure that they understand that they can do, that if it's the right for them and if they can use it. And if they have those three questions solved, now they're more likely to then engage with you, whether it's to buy a product straight away or maybe jump on a call and then take the next steps. And that's why I think that right now this strategy is relevant more than ever. And uh, I, I started using it uh, uh, 12 years ago. In fact, my background was in uh, live events. Um, my first company was a live event company. We're running live seminars and training. And that was the core of our business, having in-person presentation. Because there is nothing that builds uh, trust and credibility and connection more than that. And if you want, we can expand in that direction. Well, Especially live events kind of took a pause during COVID. So a lot of people shifted to the virtual realm. And then now with things opening back up, you have the opportunity to do both. So now there's an end. It's not an or. I think at some point in the past, there was an or because it's like, oh, how can I run an event or a webinar and keep people's attention uh, you know, and give them a lot of value pre, pre-2020? But then we adopted this new way of doing things in the virtual world. So now people are familiar with the virtual sense, but then we're also craving that live sense. So when you compare both of those together, if I'm understanding what you're saying, that, that that's where you can truly add tremendous value to the marketplace while also grabbing the audience's attention. Uh, what I would love to draw out of you is, is what is the tactical? Are you following like a Russell Brunson expert secrets, you know, signature presentation model? Uh, I know Alex Hermosi did like the wonderful masterclass of his $100 million leads presentation that followed that model that a lot of people in the marketplace liked. Do you suggest that? Or are you doing something a little different? Is there nuance there? Uh, you know, what, what would you say to some of those type of like, again, a little bit more tactical questions, but just curious to hear what you what you would say on that. Sure. I, I, absolutely. I love I love talking about that because uh, I actually don't. Now, I follow a lot of the principles because the principles of influence and persuasion are the same principles. Right. So whether you use a webinar, uh, a VSL, which is a virtual sales letter or a written landing page copy, the principles are the same. Uh I think that my message is very different from the one from Russell because I don't invite people to follow a particular script. I will give a framework, slightly different, but I think that some people, what they do, they try too much to be someone that they are not. And that's why there are only few people that are making, uh, that can make uh, the, the, the Russell framework work. Because what they're doing, they're trying to be a Russell, they're trying to be someone else. And what they're missing is the element of connection. Your audience will connect with you for who you are. So if you like to talk about things in a different way, then your audience will connect with you in that different way. That uh, 15 steps close uh, work for some personality doesn't work for others. And that's why I found that a lot of people, they try the Russell method and then they come to me. It is, is that a more longer approach? Yes, because it, it means that you are finding your way is it a more sustainable approach? Absolutely, because now you create a presentation that is yours. And so, for example, for some people, they are having a more invitational style. They are not the kind of people that they are push, push, push. If you see how Russell is about, I'm going to give you this, and I'm going to give you that, and I'm going to give you that. So if you are the person with the kind of energy, that works. Alex Ormosi is a great example. He has a similar energy. But you have people that have a much more softer energy. They want to draw people in. They have a more invitational style. If they try that approach, most of the time it backfires because it's not them. Uh, and so why? that's why I will follow a lot of principles, but my invitation is always to find your own style. Just think about how would you communicate to a prospect? How do you communicate in person when you're having someone that you want them to buy in front of you? If you switch that style, now your presentation is not going to work because people will feel a disconnect. It's like, oh, oh, 
on Domino. That's not you. And that's where I would love to be the starting point. And that's where my approach is different. And one of the th- one of the tools that are I would say are probably similar is using use cases, um, examples, testimonials. Uh, this is uh, like proof of concept. This is what worked. How 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 do you coach your students that if they are like just launching? Because that's one of the things that you really specialize in is helping someone launch. If they're just launching and they're like, I don't have like use cases or proof of concept or, sh- or, or stories to share, how do you suggest somebody going about using um, testimonials or grabbing some of this from, from uh, something that hasn't existed yet? Well, what, is, what is your suggestion there? Uh, I, I actually <laughs> I'm running a webinar program and I had the same question yesterday, exact same question from one of the students. It's like, okay, I don't have, a, I, it's the first time I'm launching this offer. I don't have case studies and testimonials for this particular offer. So first of all, my first question is, do you have other case studies for similar work that you have done? Because the reality is sometimes when people go into a new field, like launching a new offer, for example, it's almost like they draw a line and they think that everything else that they've done before that offer doesn't exist anymore, even if it is similar work. And so I want them to think about what case studies, testimonial results did you have? Maybe you worked one-to-one. Maybe you helped someone in an informal way just by having a conversation and they got a great result out of it. Maybe you help someone else uh, as part of a different program, but the context is relevant. So remember, no one can take away the work that you have done from you. It's your work, it's your results. It's just that because the new offer is delivered in a different way. So don't confuse the work and the delivery. So that's the, the first step where I will go. It's like, have you have achieved similar results with others in other context? Number one. Number two, if not, then a webinar is not the right thing for you to do unless you're already very familiar with selling. So let me put it this way. If you are new to business, never run a webinar before, very new to business, my recommendation is to maybe do some pro bono work first, get the testimonials, and then run the webinar. That would be my perfect recommendation because you know, when you're running a webinar, people are buying from you. And if you don't have the confidence and self-belief that what you're doing works because you've never done it before, it's going to be very difficult to put it across to other people. That's number one. If you are already an expert in running presentation, you've been run businesses before, you can also launch things without testimonial, but the best thing is to be upfront and say, hey, this is the first time I'm doing something like this. I don't have any case studies. I don't have any testimonials. The reason why you're getting a great offer right now is because at the end, I will want a case studies or a testimonial from you. So you pay less, but I need to have the testimonial at the at the beginning, in the middle, and at the end. Is that okay for you? Great, let's go ahead. So that's another way to launch something in exchange for testimonials with a lower price point and still use a webinar for that. Great, great response. Absolutely great response. And, and I relate, and I'm really appreciative of your response there because I was in direct sales for 20 years. So I had 5,000 st- young professionals that I trained on sales and business. And I had tons of testimonials in the context of direct sales. But when I went to start my coaching brand, it was like, well, I never pay, got paid to coach in exchange for that. So what did I do? I went to the testimonials from people that I trained, got testimonials from them and brought it over and said, I've coached these people in a different style, but this is what they had to say. Uh, so I really like that you said, pull from your expertise, pull from your past, even though it might be a different offer. And I really love what you said, that if you're not really great at sales, maybe webinar might not be the best start. Do some pro bono work, get some, uh, get, get some proof of concept, uh, and, and then you could take those testimonials. And also, I love that you said, get an exchange of before, during, and after these testimonials uh, during the process. Great, great, mm-hmm. great response. If I can, if I can build, if I can build on Please. that, uh, I think that there is uh, for people that are starting out, uh, there is uh, a lot uh, of I need to look like I've got it together without doing the groundwork. So I'll give you an example. Um, I started in the coaching industry, and it wasn't popular. I started my business at thirteen. GTEx is uh, 12 years this year, but I started in business uh, for uh, thirteen years ago. So I was twenty three when I started. And uh, in the coaching industry, there weren't many 23 years old 13 years ago. Now it's very popular. 
But at the beginning, I started as a youth coach working with young people. And then I did more than 100 coaching sessions for free in exchange of testimonials. But why did I do that? Number one, I wanted to know that whatever I was going to sell later, I was capable of delivering it. Two, I needed to learn from experience. And three, I had something to prove. You know, if someone is starting in a new industry or is a bit younger and so on, some people will look like, hey, what experience do you have? And so I remember that I did this more than 100 coaching session and I had this printed folder that I was going to meetings to because the line word wasn't that developed 13 years ago. And when I was meeting with someone, maybe it was like 40, 50 years old, I was a uh, I knew what I was doing because I did more than 100 sessions for free, but also had this stack of folder with testimonials. And so I would just put it on the table. I said, hey, if you have any questions, these are all the people that I worked with. And some people will just scroll through. They will not even read, but just seeing the amount will give them peace of mind. And I think that that gave me the confidence to get out there. And then when I had to do a webinar, I never asked to like what testimonials I'm going to put in, but also gave other people the confidence to see, okay, actually, you've done the groundwork. And that's what a lot of them, I think, is missing right now. Uh, are you good at what you're doing? Are you good at what you're doing? Have you invested the time to become good at what you're doing? And if you do that, people will buy from you and it will get a great experience. They will recommend you. You will be like a great business. It's no rocket science. Mm, this is really good. I, I wanted to circle back to one thing that you said, which is, um, if maybe if you don't have the proof of concept or you know, maybe sales isn't your thing, uh, maybe a webinar might not be the best strategy, potentially. One of the things I know you also specialize in is using other people's audience, right? OPA, other people's audiences, and how you might be able to get mm -hmm. featured, as an, uh, featured as a guest or featured as an expert in the eyes of somebody else's uh, where they're positioning you. So it's like, instead of me attracting my own audience and my own, uh, you know, uh, one-on-ones doing a hundred one-on-ones, I might say, Simone, man, a hundred one-on-ones, I got to go find the hundred people. And then I got to have the conversation with them. Wouldn't it be easier if I just had somebody else who had an audience of a hundred people and I just spoke to all of them and I was positioned as an expert and then I delivered my message that way, and they just kind of drew out of me. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe got some, uh, you know, featured or publications or something there. Talk to me a little bit about maybe a strategy there. You know, I'm trying to draw out from you. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you an opportunity. To 100, that, but that's things. that's that's why I'm yeah. here. And and by the way, to clar to clarify, I don't. I'm not. Even, I'm not saying that everyone needs to do a hundred coaching sets. That's that's what I needed to prove to myself and to be comfortable in what I was doing because it was very different industry. I started as a waiter. My background was in the catering industry since I was 14. So it's not that I had experience, uh, work experience, uh, qualification in that field. So the 100 sessions were built over years and it was what I needed for me to become good at what I was doing. But a lot of people that I work with, maybe they had careers with other uh, jobs that where they did similar work before they shift into a new industry. So they can draw from that experience. So I'm not saying that because you're doing something new, now you need to have, that's what I needed, okay? Now, if we're talking about the, the partnership model and other people audiences, this is my favorite business model. Because now you have, let's say that you have a good offer, and uh, you have good results with clients, you've proven that, step number one. Step number two, you have a great presentation that you know it works. You have tested, you have tried it, you've run it a few times. You know that every time you open your mouth, someone is going to buy or is going to open doors and opportunities for you. So you get to the point where the presentation becomes very predictable. Every time you deliver it, it's going to give you client. Every time you open your mouth, it's going to give you client. Then you have the third steps. So okay, let's put it in front of new people. And other people, audiences, I love it because uh, in particular with webinars right now, you know, webinars are not new, <laughs> right? They've been around the block for a while. There are thousands of webinars that people could join each day. A lot of, some of them are live, some of them are automated. So what makes someone pay attention is context. As you mentioned, if someone brings me to their audience and say, hey, listen to Simone, it's going to deliver this presentation about how to create great webinars, whatever. They are more likely to register, they are more likely to show up, and they are more likely to buy because that recommendation is being given. So it's like a testimonial on steroids. That's why I love it. So instead of spending a lot of money up front to get leads on Facebook ads and, and all the others, I love building a lot of great strategic partnerships. And the good thing is that if you want to have freedom, 
you know, by talking about being better than rich, right? Being better than rich for me means also time freedom. And if I want to have time freedom, one of the strategies like building a few strategic partnerships and you just need six and the base level. Six strategic partnerships, they promote you twice a year each, which means that every month you're in front of a new audience. But because you can have a presence in those communities, now you get to a point where people are just going to come to you consistently. You deliver your presentation, they buy, and you get them into your business process. And that's what I really love about this approach. And the goal that I have for a lot of my clients is just build six and get them to commit to twice to promote you twice a year. It's very doable, it's manageable, it's achievable. And then if you have more, then the sky's the limit. What I really like about what you're saying is if you create by you creating strategic partnerships, these are essentially your um these are like raving fans. Like these are your partners where it's like my I win when you win, you win when I win. If I could add value to your audience with my product or service, and then in exchange, not only am I going to add value to your pro- your audience, I'm going to give value to your audience. You, as the host or the facilitator of your audience, might get a kickback or some sort of reward, or maybe it pos- makes you look really good because you brought an authority to your space and you're helping your clients and students win. And it's a win for me because it gets me into different networks. I- I- I'm a firm believer in the uh, partnership model. Do you have any... Um, any additional counsel on maybe how to forge those partnerships? You're, you know, do you have like a uh, an approach? Like, how do you foster goodwill with someone to establish that trust in the beginning? I'm assuming there's like more of a warm networking outreach of your pre-existing yeah. list, and then there's like that cold outreach, which I'm sure is like really fostering and nurturing a relationship uh, before you can, uh, you know, go in for an ask. More of like a jab, 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 hook type of mentality from Gary V. But I'd love to see what what shows up for you. And then we'll take a, a pivot because I'd like to hear a little bit about GTEx and you know what 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 that methodology is. Yeah, absolutely. So the um, the 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 thing about partnership is that uh, it can take uh, realistically sometimes between three to six months to close a partnership, which means if you work one solid month, you can get uh, after three to six months uh, your calendar full with partnership. But it requires a good solid month or a couple of months of focus. Now, um, building these partnerships, uh, everyone that has done partnership work, you will see that you need to be willing to kiss some frogs before find Prince Charming. <laughs> because some partnerships are going to be a delight to work with. They're going to become some of your best friends. You're going to create some incredible alliances and they work together long term. For example, one of my best partnerships is someone attended one of my courses. She's in a LinkedIn trainer. She said, I need to put this in front of my audience. And every year we do at least two webinars to her audience. She brought us at least a quarter of a million dollars in sales. Just her. Incredible partner to work with. A pleasure. A joy. Jennifer, love you. Right, really big shout out. Then you have other partnerships and you're like, okay, we have tested it out. We're actually not a good fit. We don't really click personality-wise. You said that you were going to do something and you have not done it. So all these kind of things, they might happen. And they will happen the more partnerships you do. So for you, is going to be, for everyone who starts with partnership, I would recommend to do at the beginning as many partnerships as possible with people that you feel there is a synergy. And when I say a synergy means people that have similar values to you, because it's important. Remember, their audience is going to become your audience. So if there is a conflict in values in the way people see the world, the ideal clients are not aligned, you're going to get those people into your world. And then you're going to be the one having problems with that or dealing with that misalignment. So alignment of values is the biggest thing. The second thing is making sure that the other person has a complementary or different product. So serves the same audience, but with a complementary or different product. A lot of people, they start with partnership and they think a partnership is... Let's collaborate with someone that does the same thing that I do. No. Like, you're now going to get the same person in the audience, get to make a split decision whether they're working with you or them. No, it's like your whatever you offer is going to be either like the next step or the previous step or a side step for what the other product is offered from the other person or company. So that's the, the, the second part. So alignment of value, 
alignment of products. And then at that point, you can test. You can say, okay, let's run a test run. Now, I never commit for long term at the beginning. Let's just do one, maybe with a sample size of your audience. So what do you mean a smaller part of your audience? Let's start with small. I love doing that because then we can decide, does it make sense now to go bigger? And I think that also for a lot of people, if you propose to start small, there is less to lose for them because it's going to be a gamble for them as well if they don't know you well. And now it shows the willingness that you have from your side that you're willing to play the long game, that you want to do things right. So if you are the one inviting, hey, why don't we just start small here? Let's just see what feedback your clients give you. What do they think about this part? What do they think about me? What do they think about the way I deliver the product that we serve? And then let's see if we can make something bigger. You do that, you will have a great longevity with partnerships. That's great. Um, let's let's go into GTAX. Tell, what, what, what is GTAX? What is that? Does, is that an acronym? Does that stand for something? Is that just the name of a company? I know you have these four core elements that you like to teach with that. Um, tell us a little bit about the origin story of GTAX. What does it stand for? What does it mean? We get in the four core elements of GTAX. I'd like to hear a little bit about that. Yeah, GTAX was born uh, 13, uh, 12 years ago. Uh, me and my business partner sat down uh, and um, uh, we were looking to create the name of a company because I managed to find, I were both 23 at the time, I managed to find a venue in an organic farm uh, to run events. So I got, I don't remember how, I managed to negotiate this venue for seven events for free. And uh, it was a person that I met at a, a personal development event. We were just the two youngest people in the room. Everyone else was in the 40s and 50s. We're the only like 22, 23 year old guys being there. And we clicked. There was an alignment of values. Talking about alignment of values in partnerships. There was an alignment of values. There was an alignment with vision. We said, okay, we want to create something in the personal development space. We just didn't know what because we were so young. And then I managed to find this venue and I told them, okay, I got this venue. What do we do? So we sat down and said, okay, let's just invite some speakers that we know and start running the seven events and then we'll take it from there. Okay, we need the name of a company. How do we come up with the name of a company? Let's think about the values that we have in common. So we thought about the values that we had in common and they were growth. So we both believe in mutual growth. They were togetherness and community. And then there was also the willingness to get the work done, to put the work in, you know, that exponential curve where you don't see a result and you're putting and you're it's flat and then it goes up. And we believe in that. And so we're thinking about, ah, oh, so growing together exponentially. That's a great company name. Now, what we didn't realize is that it was too long and it was impossible for people to spell. In fact, my first email address was simone at to get, uh, growing together exponentially .com, which I couldn't even write correctly or spell. Uh, so then we found an abbreviation. We called it GTEx, Growing Together Exponentially, GTEx. And that's uh, the reason behind the name of the company. And fundamentally, we are a community of change maker. That's how we started. It evolved a lot over the 13 years from an event company where we were having other speakers speaking, uh, then running our own training on helping people finding their purpose, and then going to the business training, and now into the webinar training. So this has been the evolution over the 13 years, but the core is still, we are a group of incredible people. We want to make this world a better place to live, and we are supporting each other doing that. That's the core of the company. It's great. Really uh, excellent work. Um, I, uh, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to kick it to you. Is there, what, what is something that you would like to share that I haven't drawn out of you yet? You know, something that you're like, Hey Mike, thanks for drawing out of me what you've done so far, but I really like to kind of hit on this topic that we, that I didn't draw out of you yet. Uh, cause then we obviously like to ask our every guest three questions and then I'm sure people are going to want to stay in touch with you. Um, what, what is something that I didn't ask you that you're like, hey, it would be really cool if we talked about that for a little bit? Hmm. I, I think that the, fir the, the first one is about um, alignment. Um, alignment of action. Uh, I spent a lot of uh, the past few years uh, exploring the work of the zone of genius. 
when I say that everyone in the webinar world as will have a different way of expressing themselves and a different way to draw in people in, uh, this goes as well into business. In business, uh, everyone has a natural way in which they create things. I create things by communicating. So you give me a stage, you give me a microphone. That's my way of expressing my gift to the world. And if I do that consistently, the world is my oyster. I open doors in that way. Every single opportunity I've ever had came in that way. And so I need to focus on that. And the, mo and the less I focus on it, because I get distracted by other things that are less in my zone of genius, the less opportunities I get, the, the less money I make, the, the, the smaller the world feels, because I'm not in my zone of genius. I was having a conversation with a client. She runs an incredible network incredible network of events uh, in, uh, internationally. And uh, her zone of genius is connection. Absolutely is connection. And so now we're working on making sure that her entire business model runs around her zone of genius, where she can connect more and more people because we know that the more she does it, the more things are going to happen. So I think that the, for everyone to really be free, to be uh, better than rich, is not just about the business model and the money that you're making, but it's how you feel about your business. Are you in your zone of genius, which is the path of least resistance, which is what you're, I think some people say what you were born to do. I think we're born to do many things. That's why I don't want to say that word, but my zone of genius is what it comes so naturally to me that normally has always opened doors and opportunities. And people said, oh my God, how do you do that? And then for me, it's like, well, just, just me. Well, I don't know. Like, it's just me. And if everyone can find that and structure their business or their life around it, then it becomes an incredible life. They run an incredible business. They will open doors and opportunities from themselves, and they will prevent themselves from doing work that sucks, which is life-sucking. And, and I've been there. I've been on the, on the two extremes. And uh, one is way more fun and makes way more money. And even if you don't make as much money or make less money, you feel richer because that's a big part of your experience of life. It's true. I think oftentimes we get so stuck in the habits of doing and building and creating that we forget the reason why we're doing it. And that's why I'm a big Tony Robbins fan of like the RPM method of results, purpose, and then massive action. Too many people are massive action. And then they forget what is the outcome that I wanted initially? And why did I even want that outcome in the first place? They just get so focused on doing the thing without the purpose and the passion and the outcomes in mind. So uh, it's a great, great reflection. And um, I, I really appreciate you bringing that to the forefront. You know, one of the things that we like to do uh, for every episode is we like to ask our guests three questions. And these could be hard, you know, hitting, short hitting, whatever you will expand. Uh, but the first question is, is what do you think the world needs most today? Mm. compassion it's mm. great simple direct i like it simone what are one to three books that you think people should read oh i'm going on my on my on my latest thing that i've read i think uh, 10x is better than 2x uh dan sullivan and uh, dan Hardy. um nothing dan Hardy. and yeah i don't remember the author but 10x is better than 2x incredibly grounded business book in terms of exponential growth. Uh, have you read that one or not? I listened to it and I love the audio because then there's like the podcast no. episode in between, right? Exactly. Yeah. So I did the same. Absolutely love that one. On a, another business level book, uh, uh, 24 Assets. Um, um, I'll, the author will come back to me, but 24 assets is great to think about how do you scale a business and what assets are actually valuable in a business and then what things you can put in place to make sure what assets are you focusing on to increase the value of the business. So I love that. And then on a personal level, um, I think on a personal level, Okay, no, I'm going to give a financial one, the profit first, because on a personal level, I've got a few, it doesn't, no, no title jumps to me. But on a financial level, I would say profit first. Profit first is great in terms of financial modeling, making sure that your actually business is always profitable, because I've been there many times where you can have this business that makes like, just making half a million, 
um, I didn't see any of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I was like, no, there is something off <laughs> about this. That's a, that's a great, yeah, Mike M- McCallowitz, uh It's a good one. I have Clockwork. Uh, it's, a, it's a great book. Uh, and uh, Profit First mm-hmm. is another great one. So uh, thanks so much, Simone. So I know some people are going to want to stay in touch with you. You have a lot of really cool things that you're up to. Uh, with GTAX, you have a lot of, um, you have even have a couple of free offers on your website uh, that I was poking around on. But um, what, what, um, where, where can people stay in touch with you if they, if they wanted to, you know, he learn more, if they want to craft their presentation a little bit, take advantage of some of your free resources? Yeah, why don't you, why don't you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, the, 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 there's only one place. The best place is uh, my website, which is gtex.org.uk. So G T E X dot org dot uk and that's where you can find the free training where we expand on the webinar model and partnership model so it's a training on how to get 10 to 20 clients a month like clockwork uh this is a big part of our methodology that gives you the full spectrum of the flow uh, and then uh, on the website also there is resources if you want to create webinar presentation there is an entire training on how to create and structure your presentation in a way that is unique to you where you're creating invitations and conversations that are aligned to the way you normally communicate instead of forcing yourself to be someone that you're not. So you will see that as well. And uh, gtex.org.uk, that's where you can find everything. That's great. We'll definitely put that in the show notes. And we appreciate that. We appreciate the free resources and appreciate your time, uh, you know, being here and offering value to our audience. And uh, obviously, listener, the, the the show wouldn't go on without you. So we we obviously appreciate you a ton. And um, I also want to make sure I've, I've said this in a couple of the last episodes. If you're getting any emails from Time Rich, that is still us. Uh, so listeners, just so you know, we're going through a rebrand right now as we are uh, building up the pillar of our company with Time Rich and creating a little bit of separation between Better Than Rich and Time Rich. And uh, one of the things that we're doing for everyone who is kind of opting in and, and soaking up our, our information about Time Rich is one of the things that Simone was talking about, which is how do we help you get in front of more audiences? Uh, we have now, uh, we're going on two years of providing a service of virtual assistant services that are powered by AI. And that is exactly how Simone and I got connected. So leveraging a team that is also using AI uh, to have conversations, doing some organic reach out, fostering connections and relationships, doing podcast swapping. So if you are in a situation where wow. you are looking... We can say that it works. So it works. We're here, right? So if you are in a situation... It works. I'm here. So definitely that system works. So that's the right proof. So get it. <laughs> so if that's of interest, uh, I'm doing a, a free 90-day delegation plan. So not that you need to use our services, but just for you to map out how can you delegate certain things that maybe is a lower value than your do- than your target dollar per hour. So we can kind of like support you with that. And then of course, if you want to learn more about our services, we could talk about it. But we would give you a whole team of people to do everything from video editing, podcast production, and inbox management, social media content creation. Like, uh, and, and if you want some support with Legion, we could support there too. But uh, you can make your way to betterthanrich.com slash 90 day plan. That's nine zero day plan. And uh, that's where you can sign up for that 90 day delegation plan. So again, Simone, thank you so much for adding tremendous value to our audience. Listener, always thank you. And as always leave today better than you found it. We'll see you next week on the Better Than Rich Show. Cheers. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the show, please share it with others, post about it on social media or leave a rating and review. To catch all the latest from us, you can follow us on Instagram at better than underscore rich and join our Facebook group at the better than rich show. Thanks again for listening. We look forward to seeing you next time. And remember, leave today better than you found it.